Look at your neighbor and say, how you faithing? Mm, talking about how you feeling now. How you faithing? Mm. Somebody asked me one time, say, how you feeling? I said, well, I'm faithing great. My feelings is catching up to my faith. Hey, yeah. Ain't about to hear Holy Ghost. Because we study whether we're improving or not to determine if God's moving. Oh, still hurts. God must not be doing that. Oh, God. Abraham, Abraham considered not his own body. What a faith. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. That still blows my mind every time I quote it. Verse 19, rather, he considered not his own body now being dead, unable to produce. Hello? I'm not going to get too deep into that publicly because these young ears and you just have to get plain Jane with it what that meant. So for the sake of that, I'm not going to go there. But he didn't even consider nothing about his flesh. Every day he acted in his body by faith, not by what he felt. To consider it not was that the word consider means he didn't even give it a thought. Now how in the world there's a faith in God. <laughs> I'll tell you, when I get to heaven, I want to see Jesus and that's who I'm going for. But next one online, I'll, I'll, you got to show me Abraham. You, I got to talk, I got to talk with brother Abe. And I ain't talking about Abraham Lincoln. I'll meet him after a while. I, I got to talk with old brother Abe. He had such a faith. He believed God that hardcore that he didn't even give what he felt and what wouldn't work in his body. He didn't even give it a second thought. Hello? Without getting too detailed, can't you hear Sarah? Hey, what in the world are you doing? <laughs> you too old. <laughs> Hush, woman. God gave me a promise. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Man, that's crazy faith. God give us some crazy faith. I'm preaching to the choir now. Come on, somebody. Because sometimes you hurt so long, you suffer so long, that if you ain't careful, all you do is study your infirmity to the point you study it to the place because it's before you every day. It's a grief every day. It's on your mind every day. But I believe if God could ever get our minds so deep into his cross and into the wounds of his back, and if we could devour and eat the lamb, all of him, and get our minds so on our healing, hallelujah, I believe, I believe that our infirmity could be made whole, but it's got to start up here. He didn't consider it. And what that really means, he didn't study to see if he was improving or not. To judge whether or not God was going to do what he said. Hello? Because let's be real. The woman with the issue of blood, she got worse before she got healed. She grew worse. Luke 12. Somebody shouted, it got worse before she was healed. Some of us are looking at how worse it's got and determining, oh God, God must not going to do it. No, he done did it. Well, brother, if he done did it, why ain't God got it? That's what I want to ask. Why ain't you got it? You got to get it here before you get it there. You got to get it in here. Come on. Somebody shout, we got to get it. Hallelujah. And the way we get it is to know we already got it. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout, I'm healing manifested in the flesh. Hallelujah. By his stripes, we were healed. Well, brother, you, you're just plumb crazy. I know. Either it's the Bible or it's not. Jesus said in Luke 13 and 12, he called that woman. She was bent and bowed over like an animal on all fours. He said, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Somebody shouts, she was still bent over. He always calls you something you don't look like or feel like. Woman, you're loose. And I can see all them religious people's there. Loose from what? She's still just buying up she was before he said you lose. 
But notice what he said. He said, you'll lose from thine infirmity. Somebody shout, that's what he's got to lose us from. We, he's got to lose us from calling it ours. My infirmity, my sickness, my problem. No, it ain't. If he took it, it's his. He took it in his body on the cross. I heard a woman stand up one night, hey man, and give testimony and more of a prayer request than a complaint, really. Hey man, she testified how God had healed her of cancer, but then she complained about for the next 20 minutes of how God, hey man, glory to God, let it come back on her. She was saying God did. And she kept, I heard, I, I can't count. I lost count because I, I was kind of like Jesus with that zeal that was eating up, his zeal of his house I preached about this morning in that, uh, John two seventeen. It, it burned Jesus up. It burned me up. I, I couldn't hardly wait for the pastor to turn me loose because the first person I had to preach to was her right in front of everybody. Because she kept saying, mine, mine, my infirmity, my cancer, my this, my it's come back. Jesus left, mine, 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 mine. Hallelujah. And I was standing there, I'll never forget. And the Holy Ghost, let me hear it while she was saying, mine, mine. And he said, Marvin, that's why many can't receive what I've already did because they have not understood. I took what they call theirs and it ain't theirs no more. Even though they may still feel it, it ain't theirs. You gotta change the way they speak. You gotta change the way they talk, the way they look at it. It ain't hers. I said to that woman, you're loose from thine infirmity. Well, she was still bound up, but God had to loose her from the mentality of saying it's mine. Why should I call it mine when he's already took it? When he's already took it in his body. Where you hurt right now, he hurt when he was on the cross. What's making your body afflicted right now, I don't care if you know what it is or you don't, he took it in his body on that Roman rugged cruel cross. Don't nobody know what I feel. Yeah, they do. Can you imagine that if Matthew 8, 17 says himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses and it's truth because it's the word of God. You know what that means? That don't mean he was just beaten for a healing. That literally translates. He took every disease, every pain, every sickness in his body at one time. That afflicts your lung, he took it in his body. Diabetes that afflicts your body, he took it in his body. All that stuff that bothers you, he took it. Just tell me whatever it is that bothers you, my wife, everybody in here, whatever afflicts you, he was afflicted. We did esteem him stricken and smitten and afflicted of God. How's it 53 and 4? I want you to just stop and consider this cross right now. Consider Jesus on the cross. Close your eyes. See him there right now. Go ahead and put the pain on him right now that you know you feel every day with that infirmity. And I want you to see him looking at you from the cross. Swollen eyes. Beard plucked from his face. A face of pain. And I want you to see blood running down his face. And I want you to see broken and split lips. Teeth missing where they've hit him. And I want you to hear him whisper. I want you to hear him say, I took it. I took your affliction. I took it in my body. I weren't just beat for your healing. I literally took it. And watch him now. Look at him. Look at him as he says, it's finished. It's paid for. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
Roma kire ando sandes ando kire a sande undi le kando bal kando le ke turu mahate le konsundu bahai hile be arlo tu shile be andi husal aikli me hile mas for I am that I am that I am the Lord. That not only healed, but I am the Lord that healeth now. Behold, this night says the Spirit of Truth. What I did then, I still do now. Therefore, lift your faith to me. The same faith that you put in my Lamb to forgive you of all your sins. Take that same faith in the blood of my lamb, saith God, my son Jesus, who was crucified and raised from the dead. Put your faith in him, my lamb, and receive your healing. No longer second guess my sovereignty and my will. It is my will, saith God, or I'd have never recorded it in my word. Is it for you? Never second guess again. Yes, it was for you. It was to whosoever will receive ye tonight the words that come from the lips of my prophet. For behold, I will back them up with signs and wonders. For I will accompany my word, the word that has been preached, and I'll follow it with signs and wonders. Let me loose you from thine infirmity. I must cause you to forget that it's yours. I must remind you that I took it and if I took it it's not my will for you to keep it and behold if I took it it's mine quit calling it yours it's mine when I can get you to speak this by faith then by faith I can perform my word for did not my word become flesh and dwell among you who is that word? My lamb, my son. And I say tonight, it is still my will through my lamb Jesus to make the words of my mouth flesh. I want to do them in the flesh. I long to manifest them. Even, says the Lord, in your flesh, 